the cube is one of the most iconic and recognizable effects of the early Linux desktop. From my understanding, first being introduced by the Compiz compositor, but over the years it has mostly fallen out of favor due to it being a horrible waste of performance and most desperate environments completely dropping Compiz support. But I know there is still a fairly small, fairly niche group of users that absolutely love Compiz. Yes, I know you guys do exist. Now, whilst not being an official part of the project, it's not like the cube has completely disappeared. There is a GNOME extension called Desktop Cube that has been downloaded 154,000 times. So, there is still a lot of people that make use of the cube. But GNOME was not alone here. Up until KDE Plasma 5.23, Plasma also had a cube effect, after which some rendering API stuff was changed and the effect was broken and ultimately removed, leading to the last few cube enjoyers getting a little bit sad on some forums. KDE Cube animation disappear. I'm sure since this August, the animation cube, cylinder, and sure? I'm not sure what that means. I'm assuming this person is an English native, are present in the settings and function successfully. I update continuously the current Slackware and I didn't notice the moment, but yesterday, this date here, they disappear, and over on the Manjaro forums, virtual desktop's cube animation gone after system update. Hi, updated Manjaro KDE today, and now the desktop cube animation is gone. Animation that plays when switching virtual desktops. Any ideas? Thanks. Plasma 5.23 no longer has the cube animation. Keep in mind, this is 2021, okay? They claim it was to further the stillborn Wayland. That is the whole reason for removing it and cover switch. Wayland is a lost cause, and I wish people would quit wasting their time with it. That is my opinion, though. Despite the fact the code was solid, and it has very low resources, they now seem like they are just like GNOME devs now. I keep hearing they are just volunteers and just contribute their free time. We do too, by using it and trying to make it better. Many of us use our desktops for work and play. I just don't know anymore. I was on XSC before I broke it and went back to Plasma, just three weeks ago, just in time for stuff I used get removed. And I can understand why they were annoyed. Something they liked got removed. However, it wasn't just removed for no reason, and it wasn't just removed because of Wayland. So this is a blog post from Martin Grayslin from back when it was removed, evolving 3D desktop effects in Plasma. So this cube effect, along with cover switch and flip switch, came from the introduction of desktop effects all the way back in 2008. Now, computers were very different in 2008. You might not think that sounds like that long ago, but the Intel Core 2 Duo came out in 2006. The idea of having multiple cores that you can do things on at the same time was still a fairly new concept on desktop computers. But not just two physical cores, the idea of working with multiple threads was still a fairly new concept, and it's only probably the past maybe 10 years that we've really started to understand how to actually write threaded software. And that meant lots of software written before was single-threaded, especially Kwin at the time was single-threaded, as it also depended on libraries that were not really thread-safe, such as Xlib library, and back at the time, even OpenGL. Even years later, when Qt introduced the threaded rendering in Qt5, on many Mesa drivers, this was disabled due to thread safety issues. Nobody would have thought of having any benefit of a threaded compositing approach back in 2007 with the state of the hardware and the available libraries. Thread libraries were of course already available such as Qt Concurrent or Threadweaver, but not in a useful state in Kwin. This means the API written back then did not support ideas like rendering on a second thread or even rendering for each screen in a thread. OpenGL was in a much simpler state back then, and even the idea of multiple screen support was so much worse. So nowadays we take for granted that if you plug a screen into a Linux desktop, if you're using GNOME or KDE, it just works. Like there's nothing you have to do, it just works. Now this is because of some incredible work that was done and having things like XRender available. XRender is a magical piece of software that lets you just configure your X server to display on multiple screens on the fly. 
that was just becoming a thing. Back then, you would have to modify your XOR comp. You would have to restart your X server. And the way that a lot of people did multiple screen support is one X server per screen. So you were running, if you had, say, three monitors, three X servers, and you wouldn't be able to just easily drag a window between each screen because each screen is effectively a whole separate desktop. But here's the real fun part. Whilst it's transparent to the user, there still isn't multi-screen support. From an excellent perspective, there was, and even today, there is not such a thing as multi-screen. For the compositor, everything is one screen, and we have to present on all screens at the same time. So much for variable refresh rates, which AMD introduced in 2015, was it 2015? Buffer age extension, implemented in 2013, and so on. From rendering point of view, there was not much difference between rendering one screen or multiple screens. All we had in KWIN was an integer variable telling us the count of known screens and the geometries. So you might know that in X11, your screens are represented as this big virtual screen. So that's what they basically had to deal with. And finally, the K1 effects system had a transition. We noticed that most effects are actually animations and added a dedicated implementation for it. This implementation is exposed to JavaScript and most effects nowadays are written in JavaScript. The effects in C++ are often the odd ones which do too much and use the wrong toolkit for the wrong thing. Such as I said years ago, the present windows and desktop grid need to be rewritten in Qt Quick. The effect system should be for animating, not for developing a user interface. With Qt Quick, we have a way better toolkit. Overall, huge effects such as the Cube Family, Cover Switch, and Flip Switch are standing in the way of evolving the effect system. While we have better tools to implement and maintain them, thanks to Qt Quick. But the Cube was not gone forever, and recently, it has returned. But we'll get more into that in just a bit. Going back in time once again, when the cube was removed, two main issues were opened on the KDE bug tracker. Re-implement desktop cube effect with modern effects API, and please restore the desktop cube switching effect. Now this second issue is the more community oriented issue, where a lot of people started ranting about wanting the cube back. Starting with the OP. The desktop cube is for many the distinguishing feature of KDE Plasma. It marks it out from all the other DEs and makes it more useful and user friendly than the alternatives. It doesn't do either of those things. It is the reason I chose KDE. That part's probably true. Now I hear it is to be removed in the next release and I must implore you to think again. Being able to hit a simple key combination and swivel to a fresh workspace is a boon to productivity and makes Plasma such a joy to use. Being able to distance and rotate the desktop enables a quick and intuitive overview of layouts and locations in organizing work. Without it, I, and I'm sure many others, will be much impoverished. <laughs> Did this man just open a thesaurus? Without that, I fear KDE will lose favour with its supporters and something else will take its place in due course, but I'd rather not have the upheaval. I'm not gonna try. Vlad Z in mind. This was discussed back in May over on the KDE mailing list. If you want to read this, I'll leave it linked in the description down below for the reason why the effect was dropped. I'm afraid that we can't bring the effect back because rendering abstractions have changed quite a bit. One would need to rewrite the effect from scratch. As discussed in the mailing list thread, we would like to have the effect re-implemented in QML, like the overview effect, but we don't have the manpower resources to do so. It would be great if the community helps with the port of the effect to QML. Nate Graham also chimes in to say, I would also have preferred to maintain compatibility with existing effects, but unfortunately, what's done is done. At this point, it needs to be rewritten from scratch, marking as confirmed since there is no objection to doing so. And the OP replied to both of these comments. I do think arguing about resources misses the point. The question is, what is the purpose of a desktop? Is it to be a vehicle for its authors to write elegant code or to provide functionality to the users? I can quite understand the desire to streamline code. That's always a good thing to aim for. But I would question whether that should be done in a way that deprives users of features they need, at least if it doesn't provide something of equivalent utility. If users came first, 
wouldn't the approach to be rewrite or replace functionality first so that we're ready for the new streamlined code when that comes along? The approach to break it first and then see whether we can provide something similar later might be okay as a development approach, but not in release production versions. And now we just go way off the rails. In my first year woodworking class at school, the teacher gave us the assignment of designing a toast rack. We all set to work drawing things we thought we could make which would do the job, until one boy asked the teacher, how big is a slice of bread? The teacher congratulated him on his inside. I, I, I think you want to rephrase that one. Good design begins with purpose, identifying the required function, and that produces a specification the design needs to fulfill. You shouldn't start from what you want to make, but what it needs to achieve its purposes. Form follows function. It's a good principle to bear in mind. Keep in mind this user isn't um, suggesting how this could be done, like, at all. They're just saying, why don't you do this? Keep in mind, a lot of people who work in Plasma are just volunteers. So, like, if you want to get something done like this, they're just saying things in an issue tracker and just hoping somebody else does it. Now, all of these other comments hidden as spam are basically people just saying, I want the feature back, give me the feature back, in more or less words. A lot of people saying, a lot more than less. As for the other thread, Nate was just basically running damage control, constantly reassuring people that, yes, this is being thought about, we will bring the effect back at some point in the future, maybe, hopefully, that would be great, but, like, saying please bring it back is not going to get it done any quicker. We know you want it back, and that's it. And then Nate made one mistake. So cover switch and flip switch were ready for Plasma 5.24. Keep in mind, all of these were removed in 5.23. The desktop cube effect will be next. I doubt it will be ready for 5.24, but hopefully it'll be back for 5.24. This is two years ago. The effect was just re-added. Never give a timeline. Don't do it because people are going to hold you to it. A whole year later, people were still waiting for the effect, and some users <laughs> even went and made a bug bounty for it and were willing to pay to bring it back. Whilst there aren't that many people who care about the cube, the people who do really care about the cube. But even so, the work still wasn't being done. That's until... Do you remember Vlad? While KD Plasma add-ons MR is not merged, you could use this right here. So after he said, right, it would need to be rewritten from scratch. Where's the comment? It would need to be rewritten from scratch. He went and rewrote it from scratch. And if you cared about the cube, you may remember using this plugin sometime last year. From my understanding, it worked pretty well. Obviously, it's an extra thing you got to install, all that stuff, but like, it worked pretty well, and that is great. So now, people stopped asking, hey KDE, when is the effect coming back? Now it's, hey Vlad, when is the effect going to be done? So it's still happening in the issue tracker, but now it's just shifted to another person. And Vlad basically went radio silent in the thread. He didn't reply again. <laughs> Like, at all. He just went and worked over on his repo, doing his stuff, and people were like, where, where, where's the effect? What's going on? And then out of the blue, Vlad's plugin was merged into the official Plasma add-ons. So now if you install that package, you also get the cube back. And during this time, the KDE bug track had support for voting, but nobody really cared about the voting, like if you voted for a bug, it wasn't going to be worked on more, so they ended up removing it. But because it was removed, some users were convinced there was like a conspiracy here that maybe I voted too many times, or maybe this is a not so subtle way to tell us the effect was just not coming back, which is not happening at all. It's just no one cared about votes, so why are they here? And the best part is not only is the cube ready today, it is also ready for Plasma 6 as well. So the cube is going to be here long, long into the future. Now, I don't care about the cube. I think it's a little bit dumb. I think it is 
more useful than, say, burning windows, for example. But I don't really care to run it. But for those who do, I'm happy it's back. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you run the cube? Do you like the cube? Have you ever used the cube? Or was it not a thing by the time you started using Linux? I would love to know. So if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out Patreon, Scribes, the Libero Pay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And do you guys remember Boxhead?